Um, so my name is Preston Wong and I'm from Cluster 4. I chose the topic of product keys and key gens because I've always been interested in how people could get software like Adobe Photoshop or Microsoft Office for free, but other people have to pay hundreds of dollars for it. So I just decided to do this project. Um, a product key is a code of any link that is required by many software programs during installation. A product key was designed to let people who downloaded a trial version of software upgrade to a full version of software and to restrict people from using a full version of software without paying. This method has been useful, but hackers are going to find ways to break this. So first, the keys need to be checked to see if they're actually legit keys. The companies check their product keys by checking them once they are entered in or by checking them multiple times after they are entered. Um, the first method is really unsecure because the keys could be used more than once and the software companies would never know. The second method is a lot more secure than the first method, but to make the second method more effective, the users of the software must go back to the vendor of the software repeatedly, which is going to be very annoying to the customers. Another thing that affects the security of a product key is when the product key is entered in the installation process. Programs that have trial software require the product key entered after the installation of the program. This makes it easier for hackers to attack the activation mechanism as they, because they do not have to investigate a large amount of code compared to the installation package. Programs that have no trial versions usually, usually require their serial code entered at the time of installation. While cracking a serial number at installation time is more difficult, it's still doable. Another factor to how hard or easy it is to crack a product key is by how the product keys are generated. There are some companies who make their own algorithms for key generation and some who buy their key generation software. The companies who make their own algorithm usually have more trouble with people pirating their software because the hackers can easily rip out the part of the code that contains the algorithm. This is because the people who make the algorithms might not have as much programming experience as the people who make algorithms for a living. The companies that buy their key generating software usually have less trouble because the people who program the key generating program have more experience in making algorithms. The hacker's ultimate goal with pirating the software is to create a key gen, or a program that can create legitimate project keys. The hacker wants to make a key gen because it is basically free copies of a piece of software. Ways of getting a key gen are by using the assembly code or by recreating the algorithm used to get a legitimate product key. Recreating the algorithm requires the hacker to know and understand the assembly language of the code, while using assembly code just requires the hacker to copy and paste the code. The problem with copy and pasting the assembly code is that serial numbers are also checked against the vendor's databases, and vendors may set special rules on valid serial numbers, such as not having certain characters. All these methods use reverse engineering which is to disassemble and, and examine or analyze in detail um, as a product to discover the concepts involved in manufacturer use, usually in order to produce something similar. This will help the hacker find the easiest vulnerability to break into. Um, the software companies have combated these hackers by making their product key algorithms harder to crack, and they can do this in a number of ways. Time checking of code is where the developers of the software check against the average runtime of a part of the program. After they find out the runtime of a block of code, they use the other different portion of code to check the runtime of the first piece of code. This method is used to check if a debugger is running. If a block of code checks that another block of code has run over its usual time, the first block of code can kill the program to prevent hackers from using the debugger. The debugger is essential to the hackers because hackers must use debuggers in order to successfully understand the design of the act activation mechanism. Another thing that developers do to try to protect their software is to invest or is to insert assembly code in their program. This is supposed to make the code more complicated, but most disassemblers, which are programs that translate machine language to assembly language, can, de can detect this and adjust, which makes this method not that useful. A common thing that software developers do is to insert junk code into their program. This method is actually really effective in deterring hackers if the software developers put in enough junk code. The junk code they put in can be useless instructions or variables. Junk code works by causing hackers to spend more time studying useless code as well as to divert their attention from good code. Another thing software developers do is that they use recursion to try to trick hackers by disrupting their view of information. This method is moderately useful because if the recursions are really short and if hackers can see them, they can easily disable them. 
Another tool that software companies use is control flow obfuscation, which is where the code executes in a weird order, like it's not um, in order. Um, this is because people would think that code blocks next to close to each other are related, and they're often executed in sequence. Once the locality is broken, hackers can feel lost when they have to jump through different places in order to trace code. The software companies also use multi-threading to keep their programs from hackers. Multi-threading is used to increase efficiency, but it can also be used to keep programs safe from hackers. The main reason multi-threading is useful is because it is really hard to debug, because only the operating system decides when the um, different threads run. Work factor is also a very important part in product key cracking. Work factor is the amount of work an attacker must perform to overcome security measures. If software companies can make the product take really long to crack, it will deter hackers looking for software that's easy to pirate. This is what software companies should aim for because it's the best chance for them to protect their software even though hackers can still pirate it. Another thing that can help protecting products from people who pirate them is special hardware. The special hardware can be a USB or disk. Its main purpose is to help in some calculation in the program. The special hardware can also be programmed to erase itself if the authentication has failed for a set, for a set amount of time. This kind of activation is the most difficult to break because it's really time consuming to figure out what the hardware key does. For example, the hardware key could participate in some calculation performed by the software and it would be really difficult for hackers to figure out what calculations the hardware device does exactly. Keygens are illegal in general, but there are more ethical issues than law in play. People want to pirate software because they have a drive to get the best bang for their buck. If the people don't have to use money to get an usually expensive thing, they're going to try to do this. Um, this mindset plays a huge part in pirating of software because it's one of the greatest vulnerabilities of hackers, which is human nature. If the software companies can exploit this by luring people into buying the product because of some service the software companies are offering, the people in general will be happier because they think they're getting their money's worth, while the software companies will also be happier because they're getting money for their product. Another part of product keys in general is the question of whether a company should, put, should really put in so much effort into making sure the product keys are uncrackable. This is, this is because hackers will be able to get through all the obstacles the software companies put in front of them to prevent them from hacking into the product key if given enough time. The hackers are on the offensive, which means they can exploit any vulnerability in the software. While the software companies are spending huge amounts of money and time to try to fix every vulnerability there is. So, um, I read this book called The Art of War, and um, it's like military tactics on how to defend and attack and stuff. And I think this is really applicable because um, if the enemy should strengthen his band, he will weaken his rear. Should he strengthen his rear, he will weaken his band. Should he strengthen his left, he will weaken his right. Should he strengthen his right, he will weaken his left. If he sends reinforcements everywhere, he will be everywhere weak. This statement is really true for software companies because they have to perfect. They had because they want to protect their software from hackers, which means they are the enemies of the hackers. So this means that software companies cannot protect every aspect of the program strongly, while hackers can just focus in on one vulnerability. This pro this problem is unfixable if you look at it in um, the technical way, but there's always uh, always a human perspective to pirating a software. If the software companies cannot guarantee a defense of their software from people who pirate software, they should not put in as much money and effort into doing that. Instead, they should look at how much money they're actually losing from people pirating their software. Another point is that the companies are also losing money in the battle to protect their software from people who pirate it. The money they, could, they use for that research could be put into better use, such as making their customer service better or investing the money in a new piece of software. This would save them money because their money would earn them some more customers instead of increased security. I think the best solution to online piracy and keygens is to scale back a bit on making product keys stronger and focus more on giving the customers more services and perks. This is because hackers can always break through software protection if given enough time, and it's always going to be a losing battle for the software companies. Instead, they should focus more on being dedicated to their customers so they can sell special services as part of their software. Thank you. So uh, a question would be is, uh, so, so these techniques that the dandy parse they refuse, so uh, you know, they're putting junk code in application and multi-threading, did, did you determine or, or read about how long it takes a hacker to break these, or, I mean, uh, It was just relative in between the methods. Sorry? It's just relative between the methods, like one method might take longer relative to another. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for the 
programs that, when you download trial versions that only last for, let's say, 30 days, how do those programs work? You could just change the date and time of your computer. Yeah, you could do that too, but it takes, like, it affects your whole computer. This just affects that program itself, so you could just, like, get the program without, like, changing the whole system and stuff. Okay, any questions?